Hi everyone, it's Vanessa. As I was setting up to film this video, I had to delete other stuff that was saved and the last thing that I recorded on here, I was already apologizing for the fact that I hadn't recorded in a while and I had recorded this in April. I said that my library had finished getting renovated. We finally reopened our renovated library and I had just gotten a 40 hour librarian position. I also finally got a 40 hour librarian position and then that's why there had been so much change and I hadn't uploaded. That video never got uploaded and it's been four months after that so it's now August and even more things have changed. One is that I now own a house and we are filming in it. We moved into a nice residential neighborhood. <laughs> I've also gotten engaged in the last time you saw me on this channel. I got engaged about two months ago. Life is has been interesting in the past six months, let's say, but I am here. I was watching some videos today and I, I felt like overcome by the the want to get in front of a camera to talk about books. And this whole time that I've been away, I've still been reading plenty of books. I've read more books this year, I think, than I read in all of 2018. So the love of reading is still, I think, and will always be there. It is just the, do I have the time and mental capacity to sit in front of a camera, then edit all of that and upload it to YouTube. That is the that is the qualm here. I'm here to do the mid-year book freakout tag. One of the best tags I think that's ever been created. Um, maybe except like one or two questions that I never really know how to answer. But here we go. All of the answers that I want to give are books that have art as part of the medium. There are graphic memoirs for the most part. One is Quiet Girl in a Noisy World by Debbie Tung. It was the first book that I read in 2019 and I just loved. It just felt like it encapsulated my life as an introverted person and I feel like a lot of introverted people would see themselves in this book. I also really really loved Good Talk by Mayor Jacob. This is a graphic memoir. Really it was in the biography section but it's like exclusively in pictures. It just looks at the author's way of thinking about race and her place in this country as someone who is darker and also with the fact that she now has a son that is asking questions about the Trump administration and the things that are happening. It was completely fascinating and had me super intellectually engaged. I also loved A Fire Story by Brian Feiss. This is the recounting of Brian Feiss who is an illustrator and comic artist about his experience during one of the very many fires that happened in California and what happens when like truly catastrophe strikes and how you restart your life basically. Number two is best sequel you've read so far this year. Mm, I don't read many sequels. The only sequels that I saw on my list were Patina which is the third book in the Trek series which I liked but I didn't like as much as the other books. And Goldie Vance volume 4 which same thing I didn't like as much as the previous ones and then I read three Princess in Black books by Shannon Hale and the sequels are pretty good and something that I would totally recommend to beginning readers. I just don't read very many sequels. I read too many standalones. Number three is new release you haven't read yet but want to. I put three books here and one of them I checked out from the library and I had to give back because 35 people were waiting for it and I just didn't have the time to actually sit down and read it. They Called Us Enemy by George Takei. Three Women which I am on hold for for the audiobook. I also really really want to read Red, White, and Royal Blue. I'm about five weeks away from having that audiobook. Most anticipated release for the second half of the year. Two things that are being released next week, September 3rd, How to Raise a Reader, which is by Pamela Paul. I've read one other book by Pamela Paul that's like book related. Another thing that's being released next week that I'm excited about is Some Places More Than Others, a new book by Renee Watson. I'm excited to see her try writing juvenile fiction. This is not going to be a teen book, so I'm excited to read that one and I'm currently on hold for it. The following week after that, on September 10th, Audience of One is being released and this is by a pop culture critic from the New York Times um, and it's a book about how pop culture and television and 
Trump kind of meet. The author is also a really good follow on Twitter, so I'm hoping that will translate to the book. And another book that I'm quite excited about comes out in November, November 5th, and this is She Came to Slay. It's by the same person who wrote Never Caught, and it is being described as basically like the notorious RBG but for Harriet Tubman. So a very illustrated and not at all dry way of thinking about Harriet Tubman. I hope that it's good. Question number five. At first I was like, oh everything's been fine, but no, there have been quite a few disappointments let me say. Probably the biggest disappointment compared to like my excitement. I was truly disappointed by Made by Stephanie Land. I was so excited about this book and I read it like right when it came out. The purpose for this memoir was really important to see a single mom and how you're trying to maneuver government situations to make ends meet and to make sure that your daughter has all that she needs. The problem here was in the sequencing of how everything was described to us and also in the tone that it was delivered to us. I didn't quite feel like we were completely led in to this author's frame of mind and I also just really had problems understanding her really complicated relationships both with men and her immediate family and I feel like she truly didn't want us to know the whole picture. I also was actually truly disappointed by White Fragility by Robin DiAngelo which was a book that I'd been so looking forward to reading for many many months. It didn't show me anything new and it felt like everything that I was reading I'd already heard before. Question number six is biggest surprise. I was so surprised by The Flintstones Volume 1. This is a comic book, graphic novel, that basically takes the Flintstones and reimagines them in a very satirical 21st century way. The second book that really surprised me was The Accidental Beauty Queen by Terry Wilson. This is a romance book that basically has two twins. One of them is a beauty queen and the other one is not. She's like the anti-beauty queen. One of the twins has to take over the beauty queen twin's life. I just really, really enjoyed it. The sister bonding in it is good. The romance was nice and subtle. I really enjoyed the Harry Potter references and like all the nerd references. I also really liked how complex it made being a beauty queen be. There was never any like looking down upon beauty queens or anything like that and I really valued that as well. Two middle grade books that I was really surprised by and the voices of the main characters. Um, one of them was Tonight Owl from Dogfish. This is a really fun epistolary format where we are meeting two girls that are forced to meet and go to a summer camp together because their gay dads have fallen in love with each other and they at first do not want to meet. They don't care that their dads have fallen in love with each other and then a friendship blossoms truly and they pick up all these pieces and patch everything up and help their dads be together. It put a smile on my face and I really thought it was like so witty for a kid's book. I really really enjoyed it. And then the other middle grade book was Miscalculations of Lightning Girl which I also really love the main character's voice in this book. She is just so strong-willed and stands up for herself even though she's kind of an outsider. If there's like a group assignment aspect to it as well um, where they do a project with a local animal rescue dog shelter and there's like dog stories in it as well it just made me happy to read one little lonely happy tear at the end question number seven is who is your favorite new author i would probably say brian feiss only because i've read two things by him this year because i enjoyed a fire story so much he is probably my 2019 david small last year i read two of david small's comics as well because i loved home after dark last year so much Question number nine is your newest favorite character. I would say Mia from Kelly Yang's Front Desk. Um, this is a middle grade book about the immigrant experience probably in the 90s. Mia and her mom and dad move here from China and they take over a motel and it's them keeping up with the motel for this really mean owner and it talks about race in a way that I think is really accessible to kids about what's fair and what's not fair and standing up for yourself as Mia does and also the fact that even in your own immigrant community there's going to be people that are going to take advantage of you because you are an immigrant and they've been here longer than you. Question number 10 is books that made you cry. The only 
one that I really thought of like at the forefront was Kid Gloves by Lucy Nicely. It's her newest release. It's about her journey to pregnancy and delivery and having her, her child. It made me cry just because of the issues that she went through towards the end of the book and I think it's very important for us to think about mortality rates for women who are giving birth. It's, it's just unnerving honestly that this is how it is here in the United States and I cried because of the way that she wrote about her experience and the true like she truly put it out there and gave us a really honest explanation of the issues that she went through her delivery. Question number 11 is books that made you happy. I honestly pretty much put kids books in here for some reason. <laughs> One that really made me happy and made me laugh a lot is Ben Franklin's In My Bathroom. This is a humorous book about time traveling Ben Franklin coming and hanging out with a brother-sister duo just frolicking around town and just all the hilarity that ensues from the fact that someone from so long ago is now in the 21st century and encountering all of the things that we do now. I also really enjoyed The Creature of the Pines and mostly because of the way that it poked fun at authority figures and grown-ups. The relationship between the two friends was also really fun and made me happy. And I also put On the Come Up by Angie Thomas in here, a book that I read so quickly just because as I was reading it, I was just so into all of the characters that were portrayed in that book. Question number 12 is most beautiful book that you've bought so far or have been gifted? I haven't bought any books this year, but I have been gifted one book and that is the library book. Good thing it's so beautiful, right? The only thing I hate about this copy is this Reese, Reese's book club pick sticker that is not a sticker. It's like ingrained in the book so I can't take it off. But a book that I really enjoyed earlier on this year. Question number 13 is what books do you need to read by the end of the year? I love how the sun comes out at the end of my video. I haven't really been making any specific plans about things that I need to or want to read this year. I've just been reading as I go, putting things down as I go. I've DNF'd more books this year than last year. I'm currently reading Her Royal Spinus, which is the first book in um, that series by Riss Bowen, where we're in the 1930s, and it was a recommendation from, from someone at work. Um, and I was really enjoying it the first 100 pages, but I've kind of stalled in the last 50 pages, so I would like to finish that. I guess this is turning into what I'm currently reading question because I don't have a true answer for this. The other thing that I'm currently reading is My Friend Anna by Rachel Deloach, Deloach Williams and it's the story of the scammer from New York, a German heiress but really she wasn't and scammed their, this friend for $62,000 on a, an awesome Moroccan vacation. It's really interesting so far. I just love stories about scammers. I don't know why. I don't know if I truly, you know, feel bad for the author for like everything that she went through because there's just so many alarm bells for me and red flags. So I'm enjoying that and I'm almost halfway through that one. Thank you so much for watching this video and if you're still subscribed, hello! I will hopefully see you soon. Bye bye!